Henry Bemis was a quiet, awkward man, the type who felt more comfortable in the company of books than people. He worked as a bank teller, but his real passion lay in the pages of novels, poems, and essays. Stories offered Henry an escape from the mundane, a world where he could imagine adventures and experience emotions far grander than his own. But no one around him understood his love for reading. At work, his boss constantly berated him for sneaking glances at books between customers. Henry would hide them under the counter, stealing just a few precious words during slow moments. At home, his wife was no more forgiving. She resented his obsession with books, especially since Henry's eyes were so poor that he needed thick, cumbersome glasses just to read the smallest print. She would tear up his magazines and ban him from bringing books to the dinner table, forcing him to exist in a world where his only joy was frowned upon. One day, during his lunch break, Henry slipped down into the bank's vault to read in peace. It was the only place he could escape the noise and distractions of the world. As he settled down with a thick novel in hand, the vault door sealed behind him. Just as he began to lose himself in the words, a deafening explosion rattled the ground beneath him. The vault shuddered violently, and Henry was knocked unconscious, the book slipping from his grasp. When he awoke hours later, the world had changed. The vault door, which had been so thick and impenetrable, now creaked open with a simple push. Henry stumbled out into the daylight, and what he saw shocked him to his core. The entire city lay in ruins. Buildings were reduced to rubble, smoke still rising from the debris, and there wasn't a living soul in sight. A nuclear war, he realized, had wiped out everything. At first, Henry wandered in disbelief, stumbling over debris and calling out for anyone who might still be alive. But there was no one. He was utterly alone in a destroyed world. Slowly, he made his way through the wreckage, heart heavy with grief, knowing that everything and everyone he had known was gone. But as he wandered the desolate streets, he came upon a miraculous sight. The public library, still standing amidst the chaos. Its stone walls had withstood the blast, and inside, the shelves were filled with untouched books. Henry's heart leaped. In that moment, his despair transformed into something he had never expected, joy. For the first time in his life, Henry had what he had always wanted, time. Time to read. Time to devour every book he had ever dreamed of. The library was his, and no one could take it away from him. No longer would his boss, his wife, or the obligations of life stand between him and the printed word. Days passed as Henry lost himself in the pages of history, fiction, and poetry. He organized books by genre, making neat piles of what he would read first, then next, and then after that. He wandered through the wreckage, gathering even more books from the homes and stores that had once been filled with people. For the first time in his life, there was nothing to interrupt him, no clock ticking to remind him that time was limited. But on the day he finally settled down with a mountain of books stacked neatly in front of him, tragedy struck. Henry's glasses, his most prized possession, slipped from his face and shattered on the ground. He gasped in horror, scrambling to pick them up, but the thick lenses were cracked and broken beyond repair. Without his glasses, Henry's world became a blur. The words on the pages that had once brought him such joy now swam in front of his eyes, unreadable. He tried to make out the letters, squinting and straining, but it was no use. His eyesight, so weak without the glasses, robbed him of the one thing he had left. Surrounded by all the books he had longed to read, Henry sat on the library steps broken. The world had finally given him the time he had always wanted, but in the cruelest twist of fate, it had taken away his ability to enjoy it. He could feel the weight of the silence again, the loneliness pressing in from all sides. His dream had become a nightmare. Weeks passed, 
and Henry remained in the library, attempting to memorize the blurry outlines of words, but it was futile. The once bright spark of joy in his life had dimmed into a hollow existence. One evening, as the sun began to set over the ruined skyline, Henry made his way to the highest floor of the library. He stood there, looking out at the wreckage of the world and the life he had known. He thought about all the time he had wasted worrying, working, and trying to fit into a world that had never understood him. And now, with all the time in the world, it was meaningless without the one thing that had mattered to him most. Henry sat down one last time on the library steps. He held the broken pieces of his glasses in his hands. The pages of an open book spread out before him in a blur. The sun set and the world remained silent. 